What do you look for when you're roasting coffee? So here at 416, what we're doing is uh, we're going old school. Uh, a lot of people have uh, newer equipment with all computerized and digital. So our old school, our old school machine, uh, it's more hands-on. So we're looking at colors, temperatures. Uh, we're listening to first crack, second crack. Uh, we're also looking at uh, the the bean. Is it a hard bean? Is it a soft bean? Uh, is it very dense in water? So we're looking at a lot of different uh, characteristics of the bean and then once it's in the machine, you know, we got to go with the machine. So like we let the machine do its thing, but we have to always just watch for little cues, uh, smell, even the smell of the coffee. When you open up the big door and you start checking on the roast, there's a, a particular smell. When it, I would say more like a toast, it's almost like a toasty smell. Uh, so those are the couple things that we keep on uh, we keep on top of when we're actually roasting the coffee. Uh, this way here we can we can have our consistency right, especially when you, once you start getting to knowing the beans and the different origins of coffee, which way, how, what temperatures they like to be roasted at, how long, uh, and when you get it out. A lot of people don't know is that when you take the beans out of the roaster, it's a cool off process that's very important too. So you want to get them cooled as fast as possible the coffee will continue roasting from the inside out. How do you make sure that the outside of the bean is is roasted as well as the inside? How do you make sure you didn't just cook the outside and the inside still pretty raw? So that's now those those uh, so that's going to be a little bit tougher. So what you're doing is you, uh, you're playing with your temperatures in a sense of you're seeing where your temperature is at when it starts cooking. First crack is going to be your your initial that your coffee is starting to dry up from the inside. But now, how do you want to take it? Like, um, like where do you want to bring your coffee? A lot of people like roasting into the dark. A lot of people like roasting way too light. Uh, I think, personally, is that medium roast. So you play in that medium wheel, and this way here, the the moisture comes out, but you're not caramelizing, burning too much of the sugars and caramelizing them, or you're not cooking the sugars and bringing out the sweetness out of the coffee. So that middle part, that's that's where I would stay with, with with that to know exactly where to get to. How do you determine like what coffees um, should be roasted to like what temperatures? Like how does, how do, how do you determine that? Okay, so let's say two coffees. Uh, ta tangerine pea berry, hard bean, very, very hard bean. Likes to be cooked at higher temperatures. So you'd bring that up to your higher temperatures, like almost like 450, 460, and that's where it likes to be cooked at. Anything lower than that, it cooks, it turns, it turns, it turns, but the insides still stay hard, so you're not bringing out that sweetness out of the, out of the coffee. So it'll, it'll look cooked, but it'll have a sour taste to it. So when you bring it up at higher temperatures, it'll cook the insides too, because it's a hard, hard bean. Then another, and another way you can go, uh, look at is uh, the Indian monsoon. Because the coffee comes already processed to us, it goes through the monsoon season, it swells up with water, it makes them very light. But the problem is, is that water content, that moisture inside the bean evaporates very quickly at, like, let's say, at about 350, 365. So as soon as it starts reaching into that temperature zone and it sits there for a little bit, you'll notice it start cooking right away. And then you got to figure out where you want it and you pull it out. But those are the two differences that I would say would be, uh, would be noticeable. Like, Every other coffee has got little changes too.